Could there be some huge and fascinating man-made thing chilling somewhere in the ocean? I'm not talking about sunken ships here, but something way more interesting. Did you know that only a fraction, about 5%, of the ocean has been explored? That's right! We've sent a handful of astronauts to the moon, but there have been very few humans to the deepest part of the ocean. One happened way back in 1960, when two brave aquanauts took the plunge. Another one happened in 2012, and that's mainly because a film director decided to dive solo after making a movie about the Titanic. We can totally agree that the deep sea is a mysterious place, ready to surprise us with some mind-blowing discoveries. I mean, just think about it. We're constantly stumbling upon bizarre creatures like the gummy squirrel and the blobfish that we had no clue existed in the past decades. On that note, in the vast expanse of the Baltic Sea lies a discovery that has captivated the attention of many. In June 2011, a group of Swedish treasure hunters stumbled upon a remarkable thing on the seafloor. And ever since, it continues to make headlines. One source claimed that when the Swedish vessel set out to capture some better images of underwater landscape, the team encountered some serious challenges. They said that their detection device and camera gear malfunctioned when they were positioned above the underwater hill. Mysterious electrical disruptions were also said to have interfered with the sonar. And even though they had recently charged their satellite phones, the batteries drained unexpectedly. No wonder some soon started claiming that this weird seabed feature wasn't a natural phenomenon. People have given it the nicknames of the Baltic Sea Mystery or the Baltic Sea Anomaly because it's been so difficult to pinpoint its origin. Located in the waters between Sweden and Finland, this intriguing anomaly was said to be in the form of a mushroom-like structure, emerging about 10 to 13 feet from the seabed. The main body of the object appears to have straight lines, construction markings, and boxes sketched on it. Also, the top part of the object, resembling a gigantic mushroom, is said to feature cracks filled with an unidentified dark substance. Some have compared it to a massive stone, a gateway to another world, an underwater Stonehenge, or peculiar stone circle formations believed to be crafted by an ancient civilization. Some of the most interesting theories about this formation came from Peter Lindbergh, the leader of the Ocean X crew, the very team responsible for this intriguing find. Lindbergh, known for his knack for unveiling enigmatic secrets, made a series of cryptic statements about the seafloor object his team has been meticulously exploring. During an interview, he pointed out that if the object were indeed crafted by human hands, it must have been constructed tens of thousands of years ago, a period predating the Ice Age. The mere possibility that this could be the long-lost city of Atlantis, the underwater realm of ancient legends, is enough to spark the imagination. Nevertheless, Lindbergh acknowledged the alternative explanations for the object's existence. He admitted that it could potentially be a natural formation, perhaps a meteorite that managed to sink in the icy layers during the Ice Age, or an underwater volcano. However, he pointed out that the scientific community remains baffled by the way this formation looks. Geologists have also ruled out the object being a volcano, further adding to the mystery surrounding it. To shed light on the object's composition, Lindbergh's team provided stone samples to an esteemed associate professor of geology at Stockholm University. What he found, after performing his analysis, was intriguing, to say the least. Among the samples, he discovered materials such as granite, gneiss, nice, and sandstone, ordinary rocks that are commonly found in glacial basins like the Baltic Sea. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. However, there was one standout piece, basaltic rock, a type typically formed from hardened lava. How could such a rock be found at the bottom of the sea without any volcano in sight? As it turns out, it is not entirely uncommon. It is believed that these rocks were simply moved by glaciers during the glacial and post-glacial periods, as the melting ice sheets carried and deposited them in their current location. One publication, known for its passion for perplexing enigmas, decided to consult a lot of experts regarding the Baltic Sea anomaly. To make sure they didn't miss out on anything, they reached out to renowned researchers from different fields. 
Surprisingly, most experts seem to agree that there was nothing truly mysterious about the object after all. The rocks and features look like well-established geological formations. Sure, we can picture the formation as this magnificent archaeological site. But it is important to remember that the only real visual evidence we have is the original sonar image scan captured by the divers. Even though experts warn against drawing conclusions based on this image alone. One respected seabed sonar scanning expert from Massachusetts highlighted the numerous artifacts and limitations present in the image. He suggested that an in-depth analysis and better processing of the data, including specific details about the type of sonar used, are necessary to better understand the object. When you put all the pieces of this puzzle together, it appears that the Baltic Sea object is likely nothing more than a glacial deposit that the OceanX team discovered during their low-resolution sonar scan. Anomalies aside, why is it so difficult for us humans to thoroughly explore the ocean? Studying the ocean has its fair share of challenges, but they're mainly due to the laws of physics. The deep ocean is super dark, freezing cold, and there's an insane amount of pressure. Believe it or not, it's sometimes easier to send folks into space than to take them to the depths of the ocean. Why, you ask? Well, the extreme pressures down there make it incredibly tough to explore. Let's talk about pressure for a sec. When you're chilling at sea level, the air around you is pressing on your body with about 15 pounds per square inch. If you were to venture into space, that pressure would drop to zilch. However, if you were to go diving or hop in an underwater vehicle, the pressure would start piling up as you went deeper. Imagine taking a dive all the way down to the Mariana Trench, which is like 7 miles below the surface. Down there, the pressure is more than 1,000 times greater than what you experience at the surface. It's like having the weight of 50 jumbo jets pushing on you. Despite these challenges, NASA future missions plan to take us to uncharted depths right here on our own planet. Some say we know more about Mars and the Moon's surface than the ocean floor right here on Earth. But NASA is determined to change that. The U.S. Space Agency is diving into the deep ocean to hunt for clues about what other planets' oceans might be like. The idea is that the discoveries they make underwater will help unlock some of the mysteries of outer space. Plus, they'll test out equipment and experiments needed for future missions in our solar system. Surprisingly, Earth's ocean depths share similarities with the conditions NASA expects to find on other planets in our solar system. They may even give hints about where scientists should search for life outside our planet. The deepest parts of our oceans are called the Heidel Zone. It's a weird place, extending 6.8 miles below the ocean surface, filled with deep trenches and troughs. The Heidel Zone covers an area equivalent to the size of Australia. Very few vehicles can withstand the intense pressure of diving into this dark abyss. But NASA scientists are determined to explore and push the limits of life on Earth. Their missions to this region even borrow terms from space exploration. Recently, marine biologists have sent multiple landers with sensors and cameras to crash land on the floor of the Heidel Zone to gather data. 